Hey, Mark. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Yeah, the weather is absolutely awful here today, so that's no good, but... I mean, I'm here in Spain and, you know, it's not the greatest, but, you know, probably not too bad compared to England, so I can't complain. We, we've got a lot of rain today. <laughs> oh, no. Here's just a little cloudy, that's all. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for coming on. Um, I just thought we'd just start with like, a few questions about your, your kind of basketball journey um, and then move on to, to Newcastle more specifically and, and kind of last season and this season and, and everything, if that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's completely fine. Yeah, uh, we'll start with congratulations uh, like on the move to Newcastle. Um, do you feel like there's unfinished business here? Definitely, definitely. You know, um, it's been it's been a weird experience overall uh, with my injury. Um, I got to Newcastle in, uh, it was September, and uh, we got done with preseason, a little weird uh, due to COVID, and then, you know, first game, uh, I felt good, everything was, go was going well for being the first game, and then at the end of the game, it just happened, so, you know, it happens with sports, but then afterwards, I, I decided to uh, go back to Spain to uh, get surgery and recover because, you know, being in Newcastle with the restrictions and everything going on, I was just like, I think it's the better chance for me to be at home with my family, having the, the support that I need. And I've been here ever since. So definitely unfinished business for me, also for the team. But for me, it's definitely a challenge to come back at my best and try to do what I couldn't do last year. What have the restrictions been like where you are? What, what kind of how, how strict has it been? Right now here, it's not too strict. Um, I'm pretty much doing everything normal except for uh, we have to wear masks inside still. And then um, we have a curfew from 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. So, you know, it's about, you know, nighttime, uh, bedtime. <laughs> so, you know, most of the time it doesn't affect me unless I want to do something at night, like going out. Clubs are closed, so that's big for us, you know, like we like to party quite a bit <laughs> in Spain. So, but other than that, everything else is fine. And how have you found the last year, say, with the injury and with kind of the restrictions being probably more strict back 12 months ago, how have you found the whole pandemic? Um, it's been, I honestly, I, I can't complain about the whole process because when I flew back to Spain, uh, the gym were, was open. The gym was open. I could go to rehab. I could still do everything. Mm, yeah, about everything was normal. You know, I could probably, I could have done more rehab sessions probably. So I was keeping it at three, four times a week. But other than that, I could go to the gym. I could still exercise. Uh, I have space at home, so I could still do exercises here at home, and I could still go outside, which was huge to go on walks when I started walking and stuff. So I honestly cannot complain. So let's let's start from the very beginning. Where where were you born? Where are you from? I am from Barcelona, Spain. I was born here in the city, and um, yeah, I I live here for now until I move back to Newcastle. Until you come back to Newcastle. Uh, yeah. When did you start playing basketball? How old were you? Uh, I was 12. Yeah, I was 12. I started playing basketball uh, because I played handball uh, okay. previously and the team kind of just fell apart. It was that time of, you know, for girls to decide if they want to keep going with sports or they just quit. And um, my team fell apart. I have many people telling me, you're so tall, like you have to play basketball. And I was just like, no, I'm not doing this. Yeah. Like, Everybody's telling me to do so. No, I'm not doing it. So um, after the team fell apart, I was just like, mm. my mom was like, do you want to try? And I'm like, okay, fine. I'll, I'll do this. So I started and I liked it. So I gave it a chance. And, and here I am. I've been playing basketball ever since. And you, any of your other family members uh, play basketball or is it, is it just you? It's just me. Yeah. My, my parents, both of them were runners, um, track and my sister, um, she's also a runner, a sprinter. So I'm all about team sports. <laughs> so you say you started playing at 12. Um, when did you kind of get involved in, in kind of team basketball? When, when did you join teams and was that straight away? Yeah, it was straight away. Yeah. Uh, when I was 12, I started. I started practicing. I still had to adapt to the rules. Um, travel was a huge thing for me. Uh, 
handball is three steps, basketball is two. So you can you can imagine the internal battle. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it, it was straight away. I started playing for a team, um, just a school, a small school. And yeah, I, I got started there. When did you kind of realize I'm pretty good at this? <laughs> um, probably when I was uh, 14-ish. Uh, you know, my first year was just uh, a transition year for me, trying to get used to the rules and everything. And then the year after I started getting called by different clubs uh, in the region and it went from there. So probably at the age of 14, when I didn't travel as much and at the beginning I was a post and it was a little tough, you know, you know how it goes. Oh, you're tall. You need to be a post. But mm -hmm. I, I <laughs> that wasn't me. So at the age of 14, I started being a four. I started, I started being a wing. So that's when I started figuring it out. And that's when I realized that I wanted to keep doing that. <laughs> so talk us through your kind of basketball journey from, from the age of 14. So when you start to get more involved in teams, kind of which teams did you play for and, and where did you go from there? Mm -hmm. So I, so my first year was at a school here in my hometown. Uh, fun fact, that was the same school as Mark Gasol and Pau Gasol. Uh, mm -hmm. You might, nice. big time. So we, I played for the same school uh, <laughs> uh, for one year. And then um, a club from probably 20, uh, 15 minutes away, they called. It was an interesting offer. So I went there. It's called Hospitalet. Um, I played there for... So it was 13, five, five years, nice. about five years. And then for my last year before moving up to, you know, like the senior team, I, I decided to go probably to the best club in the region just to have an opportunity to uh, win regionals and go to nationals and win the whole thing. So I went to Femini San Adria, played there for a year. And then afterwards, I decided to go to the U.S. and um, head into a new adventure. So obviously you talk about the US adventure, when did that come about? Was that something you always kind of in the back of your mind thinking that's a possibility or did it just kind of happen or how did that come about? Uh, probably when I was about 15, 16, that's when I realized that it could it could be a thing. Uh, you know, it, it was a dream for me because my dad was supposed to go uh, for track. He was a great runner for Spain and uh, he was supposed to go uh, overseas and then due to a knee injury, he couldn't do it. So for me, it was just like something that I wanted to do for him, but also, you know, fulfilling his dream that he couldn't accomplish due to his injury. So that was something that I wanted to do. And then um, my manager uh, presented the opportunity to me. He was like, I think you could make it. And then I was like, yeah, let's try it. So I, I had the opportunity, I had different offers, and um, yeah, I decided to uh, make the big jump. And, and what was it like? I can hear it can be quite intense. Yeah, uh, it was definitely intense because, you know, when, when you just talk about it, you, you think it's very, it's very exciting. Oh, yeah, I'm in. Definitely, I'm doing this. You know, it's something that sounds super exciting until you have to sign and decide where, where you want to go. That's when it becomes real uh, and very intimidating. So until then, I was just like all in. I'm doing this. Yes, I'm not going to think about it twice. I'm going. No brainer. And then when I had to decide what I wanted to do, where I wanted to go, that's when I, I was just like, oh, this is not as easy as I thought, you know you start you start having second thoughts about leaving your your family behind your friends your club everything but you know it's just uh a once in a lifetime choice um uh, an opportunity so uh after a lot of thinking and you know talking to my family and friends i was just like i just need to go for it and then if it doesn't work you can always come back you will always be able to go home so I, I did that with that mindset. And then after I got there, I was just like, yeah, I'm staying here. I, there's mm -hmm. no going back. <laughs> so uh, growing up, did you play any other sports? You mentioned handball, obviously. And, and I'm guessing you did a bit of running if your family were all into running. But did you play any other sports? Uh, I actually did. Uh, I did taekwondo for uh, six, seven years. <laughs> so individual sport to start. Um, I was decent, but individual sports 
you know, they're not really my thing. And to me, it, it got boring, very repetitive. And after a few years, you know, five, six years, I was just like, I want to try something else. You know, I like having interactions. I like socializing. I like team sports. So I told my mom, I was like, I'm bored. Um, yeah. I want to move on to something else. So I did a year of handball and then straight into basketball. So let's, let's fast forward a little bit to last season, uh, when the kind of first, first sign up for Newcastle. When did that come about? How, how did that come about? So uh, when I finished my fifth year in the U.S. because I needed to graduate, I played for four. Then I had a year off um, from basketball, trying to finish my studies. And then I was just debating, like, do I want to play? It's been a year, you know, like I'm out of shape. I've been practicing with the team, but, you know, it looks different practicing just for fun and then um, competing again. So, you know, like uh, Chris contacted me and. Um, he presented this really exciting opportunity for me to, you know, like play in England, you know, um, it's a league that is definitely growing and we had a very exciting team to start. So, you know, I was like, okay, let's give it a try. Uh, I've never been to England. I've never lived in England. I, I had been in London once and I loved it. So I was just like, Newcastle it might not be London, but, you know, I wanted to experience the whole culture thing. And, you know, like I bonded with Chris right away and I thought that he was a great guy, great coach, um, very fun to be around. And I felt really comfortable with his idea. So uh, I decided to come to Newcastle. But then, you know, you know how it went. <laughs> yeah. And obviously, I think it was 15 seconds left in that first game against Nottingham when, when the injury happened, kind of. Talk about did you, did you think then then your season was completely over? Um, kind of talk us through the injury a little bit. Not really. I I really didn't. I'm very very stubborn. Um, it happened, and I think I was guarding Joiner at the time when when it happened, and I thought she was behind me. I was playing defense, and I thought she went for the offensive rebound, and I to me it felt like someone kicked me from behind. And I thought it was her like going for the board. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like it felt like a, it was a very, very intense pain. But, you know, like since I was guarding her, I was like, yep, yeah, it's Joyner going for the offensive rebound. And so um, it, it was it was really intense. But at the time I was just like, yep, yeah, just some sort of contact, you know, like she might have tripped. But then I was on the floor and I was like, oh, my God, like this, this really, really hurts. But at the time I was just like, it's just the hit. It's just the hit. And if you talk to Chris, he will tell you that that's what I said on the bench when when he he helped me. I tried to walk for a little bit. I remember Rach. Um, he was like, "Come on, Marina, let's go. Like we need to go play defense." And I was like, "Yeah, good luck. Like <laughs> I'm not like, that. like I can't. I'm trying, but I can't." So um, I got the sub, and then Chris and Gus helped me. And he was like, "Are you okay?" And I was like, "Yep, yeah, it, it's fine. Like just the hit, just the hit." She was like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's all good. But like, I was sitting there and I was like, it really hurts. But I was just probably telling myself that it wasn't anything else. So then uh, I was talking to the physio and he told me like, what, what happened? And I, and I kind of like told him what happened. I got hit and he was like, no, you didn't. Like you were alone when it happened. And I was like, mm, mm -hmm. no, I don't think so. <laughs> Like I just looked at him like maybe you were looking at someone else like that wasn't me. <laughs> he was like I'm I'm positive like number 5. I was I was looking at you and I was like are we sure? So, you know, I decided to believe him. We watched film right away and I was just like, damn. So, he told me he was like it's probably a partial tear or full complete tear. So, you know, at the time I was like it's it's a big deal and it clicked right there when he yeah. mentioned it. I was like that probably makes sense. So from there, when we had that conversation, it was just a matter of just accepting and trying to get ready for the worst. And then I was just like, I'm expecting the worst. And if it ends up being something else that requires something small, like maybe a couple of months off the court grade, if not, we need to be ready. And, you know, it, it was the worst of the worst. So uh, I was I was pretty ready for it at the time. I mean, Newcastle 
I took a little bit of time to recover from that first few months of the season, I think, because we lost yourselves, uh, um, Sarah Burkett, I know there was injuries to, to Ruth, and then Mante and Lisa came and left. There was yeah. a lot of, like, uplift. Did you manage to see a lot of the games last season? Yeah, I did. I watched most of them, if not all of them, from home. And, um, you know, I was in touch with Abby. I was in touch with Molly, Maddie. Uh, most of them, I was in touch with most of them. And, you know, it was it was very frustrating to see how everything was just uh, falling apart. You know, like uh, to start, everything seemed so excited. Uh, so exciting, sorry. And uh, we had depth and we had versatility. We had so many different players that could bring so many good things to our team. And then, you know, everything starts with a couple of injuries. We were struggling to have bodies for for practice. And, you know, being at home, seeing how, like, it ends up being a seven but like seven people, seven player roster. Uh, we we were really struggling to compete and, uh, you know, players were trying to figure it out. And I know it was very challenging for, for them mentally, physically. And, you know, for me watching from home, probably, you know, on the couch or in bed, it was just like, this is really frustrating. You know, like it was not supposed to be that way personally, but also for the whole team. Obviously, the, the season kind of took a little bit of an upturn towards the end of the uh, the playoff campaign. Uh, kind of, what were your what were your feelings about about the the kind of Seven Oaks win and the Leicester win? It was it was unreal. Like I was I was so happy for them. Honestly, like you know how some people sometimes they have mixed feelings. Like, oh, I wish I could be there right now for this. Like they're winning. For me, I I was just so happy for them. You know, like it was a really rough year for them um for different reasons obviously um but yeah like the fact that they they came along they came together and you know they were grinding and working really really hard for the whole year to stay together because they had a lot of adversity coming their way and you know I was not there to witness it but you know talking to them like you could just tell that it was very very frustrating very challenging mentally, especially, you know, like showing up to practice, knowing that it's there, there are six people, seven people. Okay. We don't have bodies. We still have to show up to work. And then for games, we had so many losses, you know, right away. I don't know how many, but we really struggled to get some dubs. And then, you know, for playoffs, um, they just looked like a completely different team. I remember watching and being like, wow, mm -hmm. like this is the time. And you could tell that they had different mindset uh, so much confidence that I think that's why they really needed to click the confidence and they beat uh, Leicester. They beat, you, they beat almost everyone and it, they were the, the favorites too. Like no one expected them to do that. So for me, it was so excited to watch that and especially very encouraging, you know, and motivating for me uh, watching from home. It was just like, this looks so much fun. Like hopefully next year we can do something similar and hopefully win the whole thing. Sounds that sounds like fighting talk, I like guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, so tell us a bit more about playing with uh, Chris as the coach. Um, what what's he like to kind of to to play with? Uh, he's very different on the court, very intense in a good way. Uh, you can tell that he loves basketball. He's uh, a coach that shows up every day. You know, like. In this case, we, we had a lot of adversity coming. We, we had just a few players, but he always managed to uh, motivate us, you know, like it was hard for us, but it was also hard for him as a, as a, as a, as a coach, you know, he had a, an image and a picture in mind of what the season could have been like. And then, you know, everything gets thrown out of the window. Uh, in a matter of like two, three weeks. So like, that's definitely something frustrating as a head coach, but you know, he always manages to stay very optimistic, very positive, and you can tell he loves basketball. So sometimes it might not be about like uh, tactics. It Sometimes it's just about effort and leaving everything out there. You know, sometimes you run a play, it doesn't work. Okay, it's fine. Keep grinding, keep uh, playing hard, doing the dirty work, you know, sometimes that's what gets us uh, the wins. And that's what we proved at the end of the, of the year. Like maybe we were not the most talented team, but we, we worked hard. And sometimes it was just that grit of like, let's get it going. And yeah, we're not the favorites here, but like we're here and we can do it. So squad number five, is that, is there a reason behind number five? 
mm, you know, uh, I, I wore number 31 in the US. Um, and you know, like that's a way of closing a chapter, starting a new one. So I picked number five. Um, I liked it. And, you know, I thought it would bring me good luck <laughs> to start my new chapter in England. It didn't right away. But, you know, um, Chris asked me, he asked me, he was like, do you still want number five? And as I told you, I'm very stubborn. So I was like, yep, mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to change my number. You know, like something happened. But, you know, like I'm working hard and I'm I don't believe it was the number. And I'm here to prove that it wasn't the number. So uh, I'm sticking to number five. But, yeah, I liked it different number one digit and i was just hoping that it would give me some good luck it didn't but you know it will this year and um, you mentioned briefly the, the wbl before and the kind of standard of the league what kind of what 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 do you think about the standard of the league do you see it improving because year on year from uh, I think that it took a step forward this year, especially with the playoffs, you know, more people are watching, more people are following, which is great. Um, and also, you know, now, as everybody knows, London, um, they are building a really, really strong team for the Euro Cup. So that's huge, just not just for them, but for the whole league, you know, like the fact that they are able to recruit really, really good players uh, from, you know, like a really high um, level. Uh, from different countries, you know, like that gives a great reputation for London Lions, but not just for them, just for the whole league, you know, just a different type of reputation. So hopefully that helps us just have a more competitive league because they're definitely going to be really hard to beat. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that helps, you know, like with the WBBL, just taking some strides forward, which I think that it really can. And we've got two kind of additional teams this season to last season. Sheffield, obviously, back in the team. And then Gloucester, the new team, coming in. Is that, is that important as well, to kind of have a few more teams to really build that competition up? Definitely, yeah. I think that if we have more teams, that means more styles of playing, you know, um, especially for recruiting. When, when you're trying to recruit new new players, sometimes you have to offer a certain style of playing. You know, sometimes they're a little more physical. Sometimes they're a little more flashy. Uh, some of them play fast. Some of them play slow. So, you know, the more teams we have in this league, the more styles of play we have, which means that we can have – more of a variety of players from different countries, from different, you know, uh, from all sorts of uh, leagues and, and countries. So I think that's definitely going to be huge for us. I've got some questions to finish off, just like quick fire questions, just yeah. to get to know you a little bit better. <laughs> um, right, McDonald's or KFC? McDonald's. Oh, McDonald's. Um, <laughs> tea or coffee? Ah, uh, coffee, coffee. Mm -mm. I, I, I'm still working on the tea. You know, like I like it, but I'm a coffee person for sure. See, I'm, I'm, I'm neither. I, I don't like the taste of any of them. You're, you're, you're English. You're, you're from. You're and from I'm letting, letting the whole, the whole country down. <laughs> um. Oh, what's your favorite Disney film? Favorite Disney film? Oh God. I ask uh, all the hard hitting questions on here. <laughs> That would be my, Disney, my favorite Disney movie. Oh. I'm going to go with The Lion King. Do you like the new one or the old one? Do you know, is it yeah. the new? The old one. Just the OG movie, yeah. Uh, would you have pineapple on a pizza? I can eat it. I've had it. I don't hate it, but I'd rather have it without. Okay. Uh, how would you finish off this sentence? I love basketball because... Because I like, I love team sports and I like socializing and building relationships with other people. Uh, do you follow kind of women's basketball, WNBA, or, or say that the Olympics has just been on? Could you have any favorite teams, favorite players? Uh, you know, that's a tough question because both of my Spanish teams for women's and men's basketball are done uh, for Spain. So it's been a tough week for me, but mm -hmm. I definitely follow the WNBA. There are so many good players. I love Chicago Sky. They have a great team. I love New York Liberty on uh, Sabrina Ionescu. Uh, they have a really exciting uh, team coming up, but Chicago Sky is definitely my team for this year with Candace Parker, uh, 
vendors loot quickly. You know, they have so many teams at uh, the Shield. So I'm going to go with Chicago Sky for the WNBA. And I mean, I like Asia Wilson too from the Aces, but Chicago Sky is my team. And then for the Olympics, um, I watched Japan today against France. That was huge. Yeah. I didn't expect that at all. Great, great uh, team win. Definitely. Uh, I think that the U.S. will be done. The U.S. is just unreal. They have a really, really good team. And I don't think they're messing around anymore, you know. Now mm -hmm. it's the final. So I don't think they will slack here. But definitely um, the U.S., Japan, France had a really good team. So we've had some really competitive teams um, for the final rounds. Have you, have you played 3x3 basketball before? I have here, but you know, like just summer three on three. Uh, mm -hmm. It's so it's so much fun, and I know that it's growing in the mm -hmm. UK. Um, Abby has been playing for in for for Great Britain, so it's been huge. I've been following her games, and also I've been watching some of the games uh, from Spain and in the Olympics. So I, I love it. It's great. We've got one more more to finish on. Um, what can the Newcastle fans expect and the, and the kind of fans of the league expect from you this season? Ah, you know, um, probably just a lot of, you know, excitement, um, a lot of uh, passion. I'm very, I'm very passionate on the court. I can get a little intense at times. Um, so hopefully just uh, leadership, excitement, passion, uh, hopefully, you know, uh, some good games uh, on defense, on offense, both ends. I try to be very uh, versatile. I try to um, bring a lot of things on the court, just not scoring. But, you know, I try to do a lot of things for the team. So hopefully just fun overall and hopefully some wins. Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, thank you very much for joining me. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, um, it was a pleasure. Yeah, safe, safe travels when you come over to England. Yeah, and thank you. And hopefully see all I the can... <laughs> no. So, yeah, uh, I'm really excited and hopefully I can get to meet you soon in person. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Season tickets all sorted now. So that's. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> thank Perfect. you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. See you. Bye.